Hey everyone, welcome back. So today, uh, we're continuing on with the Artnet series that we started last week. Uh, maybe been two weeks. I apologize. Holiday kind of got me a little messed up on my plan for this. So, today we're going to take a look at the Artnet node that I have itself. Uh, we're going to take it apart. It's got some problems now, so we'll go through those. Uh, I'll disassemble it out here on the desk so you can see what all is inside it. And then we'll go through it in a little bit more detail of uh, you know the pieces inside and uh, how it's all hooked up and, and what's actually going on behind the scenes. And then of course next time we'll actually go through installing the software and stuff like that. So uh, this time we're just going to take a look at the node itself. Uh, we'll look at the software. We'll do some screen capture and capture the software itself. Uh, we'll go through it and you can see the software is super simple. Setup of it is pretty easy. So we'll take a look at it and then uh, we'll uh, work on putting it all back together in the case uh, so we can get it back in operation because we have a gig coming up. Uh, today's the 27th, or, sorry, 26th, day after Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, we have a gig for New Year's coming up, New Year's Eve. So, gonna be doing a bunch of cool stuff for New Year's. I'll try to film that one too. We have CO2 cannons, uh, eight moving heads, something like that. So it should be pretty cool. So let's take a, take this apart. We'll get it down here on the desk and uh, see what we can see what we can figure out. Here we go. This is the Artnet node. All right, so I'm sitting down beside it here so I can talk to you guys about it. Uh, but let's let's open up this node here and uh, and see what it's made of. All right, so we'll get the front end of this thing unzipped. Now this is just a uh, uh, just a soft. Well, it's kind of a hard slash soft two uh, U rack case. Uh, nothing real fancy. It's, I believe it's wood inside there. It's covered in some some nice uh, fabric on the outside. Um, it's got some wear and tear, so I think eventually, uh, eventually I'm gonna take this one and uh, put it in a hard case because uh, this is getting beat up a lot. It's nice that it has like the handles and stuff on it, and it's got like a uh, I don't have it on it right now, but a uh, like a shoulder strap. Um, it's pretty light, so it's not hard to hard to move around, but it's. Uh, I don't think this uh, case is really made for the road, so getting this out at every gig and you know, setting it down and, and stuff like that is uh, kind of tearing it up. It's got some uh, some nicks in the fabric and stuff like that. So I think eventually we're going to transition this to a 2U uh, hard case. Uh, but this one actually worked out well because this material in here is uh, pretty soft and uh, Velcro sticks to it. So you'll see here in a minute when we take this apart that uh, the Velcro, I, I Velcroed most of the pieces in, in here so it, it didn't... Uh, didn't cause any problems. So, all right, let's take a look at the uh, the front of the uh, unit itself. So, across the front, this is a 2U rack. Everything that's on the front of this thing is uh, it's on a D panel. If you're familiar with D panels, uh, so on the sorry, we'll go to this side first. On this side, I hope it's bright enough. I don't know if it is or not, but we'll try to make sure it's kind of. All right, here's the front of the panel here. Uh, so on the far left side over here, this is the Nutric Power Con. Uh, this is how we get power into the rack itself. Um, beside that, we have three EtherCon. These are Nutric as well, EtherCon jacks. Um, we'll go over what each of those are for. And then on the other side there, we have four. These are the DMX outputs. Um, like I said, I told you I had to repair this. You can see here, this one is uh, a little wonky. So the rest of them seem to be fine, but that one got got loose somehow. I lost a screw there, so we're going to fix that as part of it as well. So that's the uh, that's the front of the uh, unit itself. So I'm going to take this top piece off. Well, there's the front of the unit itself. So I'm going to take and flip this thing around. We'll take a look at the back of it. Now this is going to be a complete mess right now because I had an issue at my last gig and things just kind of got shoved back in here. Um, in a non-operational state, so uh, this is going to be a mess, but we're going to kind of pull things out as we go, and uh, you'll see at least what's in here. So let's, uh, let's fire this thing up. <laughs> there it is. Uh, as you can see, pretty uh, pretty nasty. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull all this stuff out of here. We're going to kind of unhook it as we go, and I'll set stuff out here that's important. Um, I'm not going to worry about power supplies and stuff, but there's a lot of stuff going on in here. So this is the result of just being shoved in here after this last gig, like I said. This was uh, had some problems, had to fix them, and ended up shoving it back in because I knew I was going to be tearing it apart anyway. So 
Let's pull stuff out. All right, so I think we have finally extracted all the pieces out of here. Um, so most of the time you still see some wiring in there. Uh, that These are all the wires that are running up to that front panel, um, including power, which is what we got here. So since this is lighting, actually the power here is not grounded. Um, it should be grounded. You should always use grounded. However, I took a shortcut. All the items that are actually being plugged in in here, all the items in here use two prong plugs. So I did not actually run a grounded cord from that power con in because all the items are two prong anyway. So I wasn't really gaining anything by it. I guess in the future, if I needed to plug something into it or I used this as some sort of power distribution, then that would I would need to have grounded, but I don't right now. So coming from the front, there are three XLRs, you see here, um, I'm sorry, four XLRs, because those are the four, uh, the four jacks that were on the front XLR jacks. In addition, here are the three Ethernet cables coming from those EtherCon jacks up front. Flip those down here out of the way. And then here's the power that comes in from the PowerCon. So that is it. The wires are a little long. Um, I needed to have done some better wire management, but when I built this, I was kind of in a hurry. And don't be me, kids. Don't be in a hurry. Manage your wires. Things will last longer. All right, so the items that are inside this, as I think I've mentioned this before, first up, we have a wireless router. This is an Ubiquiti Air Router, HP. It's, it's just an 802.11n router. Uh, nothing super fancy. It is just a basic Wi-Fi router. Um, it is just in Wi-Fi router mode. It's not in any sort of uh, uh, mode that like uh, is special. It's it, like I literally pulled this thing out of the box, uh, turned it on, set a password, and that's been it. So super basic on the Wi-Fi router. Next we have the DMX amplifier. So if you can see that DMX signal amplifier. Um, this has a single input for a single universe, and it gives you eight outputs, optically isolated outputs, um, of that same universe. Um, just focus it on the bottom here. Um, power in right here. And basically what this does is this takes that single universe and gives you eight outputs. Because you're not supposed to just take DMX and run it through like a, a good old fashioned XLR splitter. Um, you have a lot of signal loss and stuff like that. So if you want to split and have... So like you're going to be running DMX like two different directions, and you don't want to have to like chain through this whole loop and then come back out and around to get these fixtures over here. You can use an amplifier, and then it just takes that same DMX signal and splits it two different directions. But if you don't use an amplifier, you're going to have signal loss, and you're going to have a lot of problems usually. So the amplifier um, will take that single universe, split it out multiple ways, and uh, prevents you from having any kind of signal loss. And it also optically isolates all of your uh, your outputs, all your fixtures from your actual DMX units itself to, for protection. So This thing I think I bought for like 25 bucks on Amazon. Um, I bought it initially as just a, hey, I wonder if this thing actually works. Um, and if it does, it would save me a little bit of time, but I don't really need it. So I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money because you can buy like the Chauvet versions of these and they're like a hundred and some bucks. Um, but this thing's got eight outputs and it works perfectly fine. I've used it now for years and using all eight outputs and uh, I've never had a problem with it. It works perfect. So, I mean, if you're looking to buy a signal amplifier, splitter, this is the way to go. I mean, maybe other people have had problems, but man, this thing's been solid for me at least. So just personal. So in the box, what I'm doing is I'm running the single universe in and then uh, three of the, or sorry, four of these are running to the front and the other four were placed, sorry, right here on the back, so that if I needed more than four outputs, all I had to do is lift this this thing, and then I had four more outputs here for the single universe. So, anyway, that's that. 
Up next is two of the Intec Open DMX USB dongles. So these have USB, I'll just use this one here. Just turn it USB on this side, standard USB, style B. And then on this side, we have a five pin DMX. Um, so these are what we use to actually generate the DMX signal uh, that goes to the splitter for a single universe. I have two of them in here because this is a, this is my two universe node. So I'll explain that a little bit more later, but right now each of these can handle 512 channels of DMX. Um, they are independent of each other. So what I usually do is have one of these running to the splitter, and then I have another one running to a separate port on the front of this. So if for whatever reason I'm at, I'm at a venue where I need two universes, um, I have my normal setup where I always have the first three, first three plugs on the uh, node as my universe one, and that last plug is universe two. Um, that way I have uh, the ability to run a second universe, and I'll just have to use an external splitter if I need multiple out multiple outputs from that second universe. But yeah. Okay, so these are the two USB dongles. There's there. And the last piece of the puzzle is this. If you're not familiar with these, this is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this one specifically is a three? Yeah, I think this one's a three. Um, this one isn't a, uh, this isn't the 3B plus, this is just the standard three. Um, I got an acrylic case on it. Um, that's got a fan on it because this sits inside that box. Now it normally doesn't get hot, but I just like to have the fan just as a little bit of extra protection for it. But this is the brains of the whole operation. So on the front here, we have the Ethernet jack. This Ethernet jack is what is connected over to that wireless router that I mentioned earlier. And I have four USB outputs. Well, these out four USB outputs are connected to, well, two of them are connected to these two dongles. And so this runs a specific software called OLA. And what this does is it takes that multicast or unicast ARTnet signal from the Ethernet and processes it and converts it to something that these can use, the dongles can use. And then the dongles convert that over to uh, DMX512. So this ARTnet, this is the node right here. Essentially, this is the brains of the whole operation here. Everything else is just kind of, you know, uh, ancillary pieces to the whole puzzle. This is the thing that we're going to talk about more in the second episode, or sorry, the third episode. Um, <clears throat> what's running on this and how this is set up and so forth. Uh, if you're familiar with the Raspberry Pi, these things are like 25 bucks. Um, they may have gone up in price since the newer models came out. But uh, there's not much not much to this thing. It's, it's pretty simple. Um... I, like I said, I've got a case on it. You don't have to put a fancy case on it or anything like that. Uh, I'd recommend you put some sort of case on it if it's going to be inside of a, uh, a box or something like that where cables are going to be coming up against it. But um, this thing works really good. So, But that's the best explanation I can give to you for how this is all set up. Um, as you saw, these uh, DMX dongles have the 5-pin DMX out on them. And then in the box here, I also have a couple of these. These are 5-pin to the three pin adapters for DMX. <clears throat> these are specifically for DMX. Make sure you don't you know, get some cheap ones because these have to be wired correctly. Um, and they have DMX cable between them for interference reasons because it's in the box with the other electronics. So yeah, these just connect up to this here. <clears throat> USB on this side. And then this is your actual DMX output. So like I said, these uh, these dongles are connected to the, uh, to the Raspberry Pi here. I got two of those adapters, by the way. Um, this thing's connected to the Raspberry Pi here, and then uh, the Raspberry Pi converts that signal to something these can use over USB, and then uh, these output the DMX to the actual light fixtures themselves. So, so yeah, that's the uh, that's the that's the basis of the box itself. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to fix a couple things. I need to fix those uh, jacks on the front of it there. Um, once I fix the jacks, then I'm going to start putting these things back in there. I need to go find my, uh, where is it at? I need to go find my Velcro. 
because I want everything to be you know, Velcroed in, out of the way, and stuff like that. I may not take you along for the reassembly because literally I'm just going to put stuff back in this box. I'm going to Velcro it down and call it a day. Uh, call it a day. It's not going to be that hard. But yeah, so chain of command. We have uh, either wireless or hardware to Ethernet. Go into that router. All right, into the router from either wireless or from hardwired through those Ethercon jacks in the front. Out of this into the Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> the Raspberry Pi converts the signal via software. It's a once this thing is set up, you don't have to touch it. You, literally, you just plug things in and it's ready to go. It detects the incoming signal for you, um, handles processing, and uh, gives you the output almost immediately. Um, there's no like once I have this thing built and this thing's going. Um, there's nothing I have to do with this. I don't have to log into this and change settings ever. I just, I grab the unit, set it down at the venue, plug it in, hook my stuff up, either wirelessly or wired, plug my light fixtures in, ready to go. It's that simple. So, anyway, alright, I'm going to work on putting this thing back together, and I'll, uh, I'll take you guys along and let you see uh, what it looks like when I get done, but it's going to look exactly like it was when I got started. Just watch this. Alright, so that's the end of episode two. I hope you enjoyed it. So, like I said, we just took things apart, put things back together in this one. The next one, we'll actually go through the OLA software itself. We'll get it installed on a Pi, and uh, we'll get it we'll get it running. And uh, hopefully, we can kind of go through the actual details of of the software and how to get it running. Greatest part about it is it's super easy. Uh, I'll link some stuff in the description on how to do this, some guides online. I'll just be following these, so you guys can check those out ahead of time uh, if you wanna to to get a little bit more info on. Uh, how that's actually being done. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.